So I saw about a month ago you had a $165 price target on Apple. Is that where it still is? Yep, still the same. And remember that price target looks out beyond the 5G cycle next year. So, you know, we're in October this year, so it's a 12-month price target. All right, and at this point, that would be a long way down. So a, a critical question that I've had about this iPhone cycle heading into the next one is, do you think Apple is shipping more iPhones into the U.S., trying to get ahead of tariffs? Could that affect the inventory situation and sell through in the back half of the year, or is it just too early to tell? Well, let me say what we think. We think the inventory situation coming into this cycle was extremely low. So normally Apple would build a bunch of inventory in the summer to prepare for the big buying season. This year, we think what's happened is they've run very low inventory because obviously last year things didn't go so well. So they've been cautious into this cycle. And then what we've seen the last couple of weeks is them, them adding a little bit to their build order. So we would expect that to continue. And to your point, with these tariffs coming, we think Apple may want to lay some inventory into the U.S. early to prepare for at least the effects of those tariffs if they come into place um, you know, later this year, for the, at least the beginning of the year, so they have a little bit of inventory on shore. Now, going to your 5G point, you said in this report you don't think 5G is going to bring much to the iPhone performance-wise. Demos I've seen uh, of 5G technology might suggest different. Uh, so are, are you arguing that this is more of a 3D TV type moment technologically versus a 3G moment, which really did move the smartphone industry ahead? Yeah, I, I mean, let me make a couple points on 5G. One, one of the main points of that note, and actually, you know, I don't come on here lately with a lot of positive news on Apple, but it was actually a positive point, which is they've created some cost margin in the phones this year so that the cost to make an iPhone has come down this year, mainly because of memory prices. And that creates room for expensive 5G to be added next year without much margin impact. So that's a point that we were making in that, no, that was the primary point. And in terms of 5G as a consumer feature, we, we call 5G a brand, not a feature, because um, we don't believe most consumers will notice the difference. The latency reductions in 5G are beyond anything a human can perceive. They're really designed for machines. Um, and in terms of bandwidth, what you're going to experience in, in, in terms of speed and so on, things aren't really going to change much. This is mainly a technology change geared for carriers to deliver bits more cheaply. And it's also geared toward industrial automation, IoT, automated cars, things like that. So not even uh, the latency doesn't even make gaming more realistic or something that would affect the consumer, Rod? The latency drops uh, from about 10 milliseconds to one millisecond, but a human can't perceive latency below 10 milliseconds. So it doesn't matter. It won't matter to you at all. Uh, gaming latency. Hey, if you're playing, you know, Fortnite or something like that online, uh, you're probably on a broadband connection. Um, if you're on your phone, you're still going to get really good performance with LTE right now.